Okay, our reading this morning will be in Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to read 21 through 29, and Matthew 8, 1 through 13. So Matthew 7, 21 through 29, and Matthew 8, 1 through 13. Okay, let's bow in prayer before we start. Holy Father, thank you as we could come before you. Thank you for your holy word. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. Gives us eternal life. Washes away our sins. We thank you for the Holy Bible that teaches us and, and guides us as the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. Pray as you're... The word goes forth that you bless it to our hearts. Father, we thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Chapter 8. And when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See, thou tell no man, but go thy way and show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Okay. Turn over to Revelation. We're in chapter 1. We come to verse uh, 11, chapter 1, verse 11, and um, remember the 
the the things uh, that I mentioned to understand revelation, you have to know the spiritual, uh, the numbers in their spiritual meaning, words in their spiritual meaning, and the nature of the great tribulation. And so we've looked at the number seven here. Uh, we looked at um, the kings and priests, a picture of um, believers. We looked at the clouds. Uh, he cometh with clouds. We see that those are uh, God's elect, those that have gone to be with the Lord. He brings with them. And so um, we've looked at this language in eight. I am Alpha Omega, uh, the beginning, the ending, said the Lord, which is, which was, is to come. And um, we see which is, 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 is God is the living God. And uh, which was is the cross, that Christ was dead and now he's alive, which is to come. And that's the coming of the Lord Jesus, the Almighty. See? So we have the same language in verse 11. Uh, remember the trumpet also. We see the spiritual meaning of that word trumpet. It's the sound of the gospel. Say, I was in the spirit in verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. This is the voice of God. It's, it's the, the gospel sound. And that's why it says saying, verse 11, saying, and this is the voice of God. I am the Alpha Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest right in a book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Tyrethyra, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So, okay, so um, we worked with verse uh, eight already about Alpha uh, first, and Omega means last, and you have the same thing here. In verse um, uh, 11, I am the Alpha Omega, the first and the last. And so um, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. Now, verse 8, it says, uh, which is to come, the Almighty. See? And, and, of course, the Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus is the one that's coming. Say now I'll show you. Go to Revelation 22. Look at verse uh, 7 there. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Uh, look at verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. This is... I is the Lord Jesus Christ. I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am the Alpha, Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, and the last. And then in verse 20, it tells us right there, he which testifies these things said, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. So, so we know the Lord Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the Almighty God. And uh, that's why we, we bow down and worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we know God reveals himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you go to 1 John, 1 John, look at verse uh, chapter... Um, Look at uh, chapter 5. Look at verse 7. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And so um, Jesus would say, I and the Father are one. And, um, and so... Uh, God reveals himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, yet the one God. And that's why um, the Lord Jesus um, was worshipped. I just read Matthew 8. It says that 
that one that had leprosy came and worshiped him, say, and we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. So um, uh, Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. And what thou, what thou seest write in a book, okay? So we know John wrote uh, the book of Revelation and send it unto seven churches, which are in Asia. Now I want us to go to um, 2 Peter, Let's flip back a little bit, 2 Peter, look at chapter one, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so um, this is how um, Moses, uh, David, Solomon, Jeremiah, Isaiah, they were moved by the Holy Ghost to write the word of God. See, so God moved them to write. And that's why the scripture uh, is is God breathed? It's it's the Word of God, the Bible. See, and uh, God moved these people to write, and He moved He's He moved uh, John to write the Book of Revelation. Here, um, I wanted to show you something. Uh, how if we go to First Peter, I want to show you something here. Um, go to First Peter. Uh, chapter one, first Peter chapter one. Look at 10 and 11 there. For which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, See, Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Father, it's the same Spirit. The Spirit, there's one Spirit, one God, see? The Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So when Isaiah wrote uh, chapter 53, the Spirit of Christ was in Isaiah, and, and uh, writing the sufferings of Christ when you read Isaiah 53 and Psalms. It was in David when he wrote the Psalms. So um, I also wanted to show you th this verse uh, in case you've ever read it and uh, uh, wonder what does, what's that teaching. Go over to chapter 1 Peter 3. Look at, uh, start with verse 18, 1 Peter 3, 18. For Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. By which also he, the Lord Jesus, went and preached unto the spirits in prison which were sometimes, sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is eight souls were saved by water. So how do we understand that Christ went and preached unto the spirits in prison, uh, which sometimes were disobedient uh, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, okay? And so um, uh, this is how we would understand understand that, understand this here. Go to, um, uh, go back to 1 Peter again and keep this verse in mind. It says in verse 11, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify it was in the prophets the spirit of christ see and so how did how did uh, 
uh, Christ preached to the spirits in prison. And he's talking about the days of Noah. So I want us to go back, keep your finger or um, keep, uh, keep your place there in 1 Peter 3 and go to Genesis chapter 5. The Bible is going to tell us how long uh, it took Noah to build that ark. Look at uh, chapter 5, verse 32. It says, Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then it goes into 6. And, uh, and in verse 12, it says, God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to no, unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Okay, so Noah was 500 years old, and the Lord had telling him to make him an ark. See? Now, when we get over to chapter uh uh, seven, look at verse six there, chapter seven, verse six. Noah, it says, Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters uh, was upon the earth. Okay. So we know it took him 100 years to build the ark. And so uh, if you have those numbers in their spiritual meanings, uh, if you if you wrote it down, I, I had told you that ten hundreds thousands are completeness, see? And so uh, Noah completed the ark, see, in a hundred years. So there you have it right there. The Bible says he was 500 years old. And, and now Genesis 7, 6, it says Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. So it took them 100 years, uh, the completeness to build that ark. But what does it mean back in 1 Peter that uh, he went in verse 19, he went and preached unto the spirits in prison? Well, now we need to go to 2 Peter. Look at chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Look at verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So Christ was in Noah, the spirit of Christ. That's why I said, uh, look again at 1 Peter 1, verse 11. 1 Peter 1, verse 11, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them. These are the prophets. It says in verse 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So he, so he was, Christ was in Noah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. Uh, Hosea, all the prophets of the, of the Lord, Zechariah, uh, and the, those that um, uh, God used to bring the scriptures. So when it says he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, God, the Lord Jesus was in, uh, just like he's in us, when we witness the gospel and preach the word, see? And so he's... Uh, 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 he was in Noah. He was a preacher of righteousness. Now, you know, nobody listened to Noah. That's the nature of man. They're dead in their trespasses and sins. And, um, and so this is why the gospel preached. To, it says the gospel is preached to those that are dead. Uh, go to chapter uh, 4, 1 Peter chapter 4. Look at verse 6. 1 Peter 4, 6, for this cause, 
was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh with the word. They're judged with the gospel, with the word of God, but live according to God in the spirit, see? And so those people that were outside of the ark were dead, see? And they were in prison. Their spirits were in Satan's prison. And I had told you a week or so ago that Satan uh, doesn't want his prisoners to go free. He, he keeps them in his prison, see? In their sins and bound in their sins. So when it says back in 1 Peter 3, verse 19, that Christ also went and preached unto the spirits in prison, that he he was he was in uh, Noah. He was Noah was a preacher of righteousness, see, and and he preached the gospel, and uh, to the spirits in prison. That means those that that were outside of the ark, see. That's why it says we're sometimes we're disobedient in verse twenty. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, we know that's a hundred years, wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. And that's the gospel, the water of the gospel. He, he already says in verse 21, the like figure unto even baptism does now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. He's saying not water baptism it, that's not that's not going to save you it's being baptized by the spirit of god by being washed of your sins see but the answer of god of a good conscience toward god by the resurrection of jesus christ so he's saying water baptism is not going to save you it's the water of the gospel that's what uh jesus says he'll uh baptize you or John the Baptist says about Christ, he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so um, this is how you would understand this language. When Christ went and preached to spirits in prison, these, these are the people outside of the ark during the days of Noah. And remember, only uh, nobody listened to Noah. And just like it is as we near the end of time, nobody's going to listen to the true gospel. They want to hear their false gospels. They don't want to hear uh, about um, election, predestination, heaven, hell. Uh, they want to have their own type of gospel, and, uh, and uh, yet they want to be called Christians, see? And I'll show you where it says that. Go to Isaiah chapter 4. Look at uh, Isaiah 4. I'm going to start with chapter 3, the last verse. It's, it's almost a continuation right into chapter 4. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. And in that day, seven women, there's seven again, would be the complete perfection of the external church because listen to the language seven women shall take hold of one man which would be christ saying we will eat our own bread in other words we're going to have our own gospel and wear our own apparel see and come come away with our own righteousness only let us be called by thy name to take away our approach they want to be called Christians, but they want to have their own gospel. They want to have their own righteousness. And, and of course, these people aren't saved, see, because you can't have your own gospel and your own and be saved. You have to have the gospel of the Bible and, and, the, and the, uh, the Christ righteousness is what we put on when we're, when we're born of God. And so um, yet. Uh, many people fit this this uh, this language here. They want to be called Christians, uh, but they don't. They don't have. They have their own bread, so to speak, and their own righteousness, and it's not the 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 gospel of the Bible. See, 
And so um, that's why I was reading Matthew 7. Many are going to say, Lord, Lord, in that day. And the Lord says, I never knew you. So, and God is going to save his elect and those that are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Those are the ones that, that Christ died for. The, the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. Okay. So that's how you would understand uh, 1 Peter 3 when it says he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Okay. Those are those spirits are the people that are outside of the ark that are spiritually dead and, and Satan's prison. And uh, I'll show you if we're since we're in Isaiah, just flip over to Isaiah 14. Look at verse 17. Remember, remember, this is about Lucifer. This is about the devil in verse 12. This, this is a name for the devil, Lucifer. And then it continues on in 12 all the way down. Um, and then verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners, see? And so people are bound in prison, in Satan's prison, uh, in other words, bound in darkness. And this is why when you become saved, it's a miracle because the Lord Jesus has to bring you out of there. And uh, it's spiritual. You have to be born of God. And he'll bring every one of those that are written in the Lamb's Book of Life out of and into God's kingdom. Okay. So, um, just I thought I'd touch on that first Peter three uh, to give you some uh, uh, teaching on on what that meant as he went and preached to the spirits in prison. He worked through Noah, who was a preacher of righteousness, and nobody listened to Noah, which will be similar to the uh, near the end of time during great tribulation. Nobody does not want to hear the, the truth. The true gospel, see, They're, they want to hear uh, things that they can uh, they can make a decision for Christ, or they can get baptized to get saved, or uh, whatever it is. Uh, but it's not what the Bible teaches. So God does the saving, and He's the one that um, uh, we bow down to. So go back to Revelation. Look at uh, so He says, "I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last." Right. Uh, what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches. This would be the com complete perfection of the external church, which are in Asia. Okay. And so um, let me just show you again about the church, because we already looked at this in verse four uh, to the seven churches, which are in Asia. So I'm just going to write, uh, re read a few verses. Go to second Timothy one fifteen. Second Timothy 1.15. This thou knowest that all that they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom is Balvelis and Hermogenes. So there's how Asia is brought out here. Turned away from me, from the gospel. Now, remember, in, in the external church, you also have the elect. There, there's the few of God's elect, see? And so um, you have to keep that in mind because when he's, when we get into these churches, most of them he's going to say that uh, I have somewhat against you, see? And we're going to see what he says. But there, there, there might be one in there that he says that you've been faithful, which then he's talking to the elect that are in the external church that's faithful to the gospel. But um, uh, similar to go to, this is what I mean. If you go to uh, give me an example, go to second Timothy, look at verse chapter two, verse 20. Second Timothy two twenty. It says in a great house, which would be the external church. But notice what's in the great house. 
there are not only vessels of gold and silver, which would be God's elect, but also wood and earth, which would be those that want to call themselves Christians, but have another gospel. They have, they want to eat their own bread, like I read in Isaiah, and have their own apparel, their own righteousness. So that, that would be the wood and the earth. Then it says some to honor, that would be the, the gold and the silver, the elect, and some to dishonor, see? And so um, this is what you have to keep in mind when they say ex external church, uh, the external church. Now, when you get to Revelation 18, the Lord says, come out of her, my people. And, and so that's something else that we'll have to look at uh, as we go through Revelation. But um, so this, uh, you know, here's another verse here. If you go to Acts um, 19, 24 through 27 about Asia. Acts 19, 24 through 27. Acts 19, 24 through 27. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver sh shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our own our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not only alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people saying that they do, they saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship, worship it. So you see how Asia is used. The external church would be those that go after these false gods, see, like Diana. And, and yet uh, there's some in there that Paul persuaded and turned away much people, see. There's some of God's elect that that didn't have anything to do with Diana and, and, uh, and uh, the Lord turned them to, to the Lord, see? And so God uses the gospel to do that. And uh, one more is in um, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you and much you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. See? So that would that would point to the believers that are in Asia, see, the churches of Asia. But I've read your verses that most of all Asia has turned away from the gospel. And that's why. It says the seven churches of Asia. So you're going to find when we go through Revelation that many of them have turned away from following the truth, say, and during the time of great tribulation. And yet um, uh, there's those few that God um, focuses on that are his elect. And, uh, and then he, the language is much different when he speaks about that particular uh, church. And so it's, it's spiritual, what you have to look at. It's the, the spiritual teaching of these churches, which would be the churches of today. You know, the, the churches in our land today, say, um, would be the external church. And not everybody understands the great tribulation. And, and God doesn't reveal this to unsaved people but to his people his elect uh he causes us to see these things see and um 
Let me just show you how he says, when you see the abomination, go to Matthew 24. He says it when you see. So not everybody sees it. See? Only God has to show it to you. Look at chap Matthew 24, verse 15. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, see? And so God will show us how the churches are going away from the truth and that, and that Satan has taken his seat there and no longer, uh, now it's become a habitation of devils and no longer is the gospel being uh, um, uh, presented there. See, now it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's doctrines of demons. And, uh, and when we see this thing happening in our land, uh, like I said, not everybody will see this. Only those that God uh, shows to his, his people. Okay. This is a mystery. Uh, it's called Babylon the Great. Uh, you could read it in Revelation 17. Look at uh, Revelation 17. And look at in verse. Um, Revelation 17, look at verse five. This Babylon is a picture of the external church. And it says, upon her forehead was a name written mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth, see? And so uh, as you read this, uh, these chapters, uh, you could see how uh, this, this external church uh, uh, will attack the believers. In verse six, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration, see? They attack the gospel of Christ and those that hold to the true gospel. And um, uh, look at verse 14. These shall make war with the lamb, see? These, this, these that are in the external church and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And they that are with him are called, chosen and faithful, which is the elect. They that are with Christ are the called, the chosen, and the faithful, see? And so um, this is when we get into uh, 18, remember verse 4? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, see? And so God will make sure that we aren't partakers with the external church during these days where they've gone away from the gospel. And now it's a habitation. Well, if you're still in Revelation 18, it says it right there in verse two. I cried with a, a mighty, mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen and has become the habitation of devils in the hold of every foul spirit, the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. It's spiritual language that you have to understand. It's speaking about the churches today in our land. It's become a habitation of devils. They're, they're gotten away from the gospel of Christ. So uh, you, you'll see is more and more will well, the ministers will won't even be having the Bible. They'll just be walking around on the uh, on the stage up there, doing a lot of talking, and uh, and now the Word of God is not in authority. See, and and so they're tickling the ears of those that are sitting in those seats. And of course, uh, the Bible says, uh, go to Psalms. It it tells us, uh, and I think it's around Psalms. Let's see. It's going to say, I will not sit with the congregation of. Uh, 
Let me see. You, you see that verse? It says, I'll not sit in the congregation. Well, uh, we'll have to find it later. There's a verse that says, I'll not sit in the congregation of the wicked. I know it's right there in the beginning of the Psalms. Um, it might be a little bit more. What is it for? Okay, go to 26, five. Uh, Psalms 26, verse 5. Thank you. I have hated the congregation of evil do doers and will not sit with the wicked. See? And so God gives us insight or uh, understanding during these days to keep us spiritually protected. Why do you think we have language like that in the Bible here? I have hated the congregation of evil doers and will not sit in the wicked you know we're not going to with the wicked we're not going to go in there and sit there in the and uh when this uh, the church is dead and the gospel is not being brought forth see and uh and, and so a, a true believer would, would never want to do that and so um this is the nature as we get into a, a great tribulation um how we see that the church is uh, are going away from the word. And let me give you a couple verses just to show you in the scriptures. Go to 2 Thessalonians. If you look at chapter 2, uh, look at ch chapter 2, look at verse um, 3. Chapter 2, verse, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition and it's talking about uh, the in verse one the coming of our lord jesus christ and our gathering together unto him so this great tribulation is right near the end of time and there has to come a falling away first see falling away from the the truth the churches are going to fall away from the true gospel. And, and, and that's part of the, the nature of the great tribulation. They're getting away from the truth. And it says, except there come a falling away first, see? And so this is all scriptural where the Bible teaches that, that these things have to happen. And then, uh, of course, God will... Um, uh, gather all his elect and save all those that were in the book of life. Look at first Timothy, look at chapter four and verse, um, verse one. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, sh some shall depart from the faith that's falling away that is falling away from the faith see giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils see and this is why uh this is this is why i tell you that the churches are going apostate they're going away from the truth and that's why uh the lord says come out of her my people and uh and so um, you have church after church um, departing from the faith, see? And so next, uh, then you find the music being whirly and everything, everything else going on in there whirly. And uh, um, the gospel isn't there. The light of the gospel isn't there. And nobody, how can anybody be saved? You only could be saved by the true gospel. The truth shall make you free, not lies. Okay. Um, I'm almost done. I want us to go to Luke 13. I don't want you to be discouraged during these days because 
uh, one disciple asked the Lord, uh, are there just a few people that are being saved? Remember, I, I went to uh, Noah's day, and, and, and uh, when you read the Bible, Jesus uh, said the day when Jesus comes will be just like the days of Noah and the, and the days of Lot. And there weren't many saved during the days of Noah. Eight people, it says, and, and only Lot and his two daughters made it out of Sodom. And remember, the Lord brought Lot out of there. And so look at uh, Luke 13 and look at verse 23 there. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there be few that be saved? Okay. So there's a question to the Lord Jesus. And he said unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate of course christ is that straight gate see and so when you come to the truth it's narrow and jesus says narrow is the way to life and few be there that find it see and so uh when you get the sound the the doctrines of the bible when you start uh understanding the doctrines of the bible it becomes very narrow to what the churches believe see and so when you start talking to these people that are in there they'll disagree with you and they don't see it and they don't understand it and so this is why you have to understand that they're they don't understand spiritual things or they're blinded from the sound the gospel or the doctrines of the bible see and uh, uh but here the lord says strive to enter in at the straight gate for many i say unto you will seek to enter in this external church and shall not be able to not be able see so so yes few that are saved and uh jesus even said many are called you are chosen and so the only ones that are going to be in heaven are those that have been predestinated before the foundation of the world chosen in christ they're the only ones that christ died for those are the sheep say and and uh, jesus says the good shepherd lays his life for the sheep not the goats he put the sheep on the right the goats on the left and the, and the sheep, he says, blessed are you, enter into the kingdom. And so um, uh, there were a few that were saved during the days of Noah, during the days of Lot. And so I could see as we near the end of time, um, uh, it even says uh, there's a place um, when Jesus comes, he says, will he find faith on the earth, say, when Christ comes? It's a time where Satan is loosed and he's taking his seat in the churches and he's working in the hearts of unsaved people. They're becoming more wicked, colder toward the word of God, to the Lord Jesus. And, uh, and so next thing you know, they don't want anything to do with their Bible. And uh, even ministers out there walking around, where's their Bible at? Read from the Bible. That's our authority. And, and uh, study the Bible. This is how God speaks to us. And so uh, I just say this as uh, that God could grant you understanding what's going on. Um, I want to finish by going uh, to Luke 24. Don't be surprised if not many people see these things. Like I says, not many do. But if you see it, then praise the Lord. Because here in, in Luke 24, it says in verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And so God has to open up our understanding to understand the language of the Bible, see? And if he doesn't do that, then you don't understand it or you don't see it, see? And so um, remember, God gives the mysteries. Uh, I'd like to end if I know I said, let's end with that one, but let's go to Matthew 13. Because he says, he says, 
the, uh, the mysteries, uh, look at chapter 13, verse 11. He's speaking to his disciples. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. See? And remember I said Babylon is a mystery, mystery Babylon the Great. It's about the Great Tribulation. So not everybody's going to understand this. It says right there, but to them it is not given, those that are outside God's kingdom. But to God's people and God's elect, it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Say, Okay, so Lord willing, next week we'll pick it up in verse uh, 12.